Okay, everyone, I'm back. I'm Patty Palmer, and you are watching the regular Thursday afternoon art tutorial. Now, what you're going to be learning today is the continuation of my art tutorials based on the elements of art and principles of design. And if you're a sparkler, you'll know that if you're following the Epic curriculum, I'm going to be doing these in order. So today I'm going to be talking all about color. So this is probably one of my favorite uh, elements of art to kind of talk about because there's so many possibilities. So hello everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining me on an odd day. Uh, normally it's a Thursday afternoon tutorial, but I'm super happy to be able to pop on today. I know a lot of you probably are finishing up school and maybe heading into like a cocktail hour or perhaps that, you know, you're taking your kids off to some sporting event, who knows? Anyways, thank you for tuning in. Now, what I'm gonna be doing with you today is just a few things. I thought I would do an actual project with you, a project that um, it doesn't really matter the subject, you can vary the subject indefinitely, but the technique is what I, I really want you to, oh, hi, Kathy, thanks for popping back over here. <laughs> She knows what I mean. Um, the technique is something that you can really uh, learn uh, to kind of teach and then you can replicate it all day long. It's such a great way to introduce kids to color. Now the other thing that we're going to do, I have this handout for you. Every art tutorial I love to give these handouts and so this one is the color handout and inside the color handout there is like a little mini kind of a poster that's not really a poster it's this big but I think what you can do with this is either photocopy it and put it in your teacher workbook or maybe on in your unit of color or even laminate it and just stick it on your whiteboard whenever you're teaching it's kind of helpful just to have those references nearby now if you're a sparkler of course you get the large posters and those are available to every sparkler so make sure you check those out in the epic curriculum i know they're pretty awesome i, I just love to look at them because they make me happy and i also have a color wheel over here um, just in case you don't have one so sparklers can access that in the resources now the other thing i have for all of you whether you're a sparkler or not is these little activity sheets and I, sparklers do have these in your color uh, bundle, but for everyone else, I wanna give them to you. And so this is a warm color mixing activity. And then we have a cool color mixing activity. So you can, um, my best tip for whenever you get these activities that you can literally paint on is to photocopy these directly onto cardstock and then it's like a pretty heavyweight paper and you'll get fantastic results and it, the paper will hold up to the paint. So that's what I'm gonna do uh, today is do the activity. I'm gonna show you how to do a really cool lesson, um, especially focusing in on the technique. And then to start off, I do want to um, show you a couple of books that I absolutely love. Now, if you're gonna be teaching color, and I know you all do, whether you know it or not, you're teaching one of the most important elements, and that is color, because it's so easy to teach. Uh, but if you want to introduce your children to color and kind of transition the art lesson with the book, these are some of my favorite. So Ashley's going to put in the list, so you don't have to write these down. Uh, she's going to put this in the comment section, and you can kind of just uh, do a little screenshot, and you can have that list if you want to. But The Artist Who Painted a Blue Horse is probably one of my favorite books for little children. And if you haven't seen this book, well, I'm pretty sure you have if you're into art in any ways, um, this is probably in your art library. And if it's not, I think it should be. It would be one of my top 10 picks. But of course, it's based on the artist Franz Mark, who did paint a blue horse. And his paint, his blue horse series was really popular. But what I do love, it's just the fun playfulness of color. Like, I mean, how many kids have seen a yellow cow or like a pink rabbit? And well, they probably have stuffed rabbits on their bedside table and you know, a green lion. These are just a wonderful way to showcase that color is just possibilities and that you don't have to put yourself into a corner with colors. Here's a new book that I thought was, is just adorable. It's called a Swatch. The Girl Who Loved Color. 
I think that's like a perfect tie-in to this theme. It's by Julius Deno, Julia Denos, and she's the author and illustrator. I love those combinations. This is a beautiful book, and I won't go through the whole thing, but it's just about, you know, it, it, the illustrations in the story are really wonderful. It's very expressive. It's very, it really uh, ties in color, and I mean, there's hues, and I don't know. I'm not gonna go through the whole thing. This is a good one. Again, this I'm not going to go through the whole books, but The Cat and the Bird, number one. I love this book. It's by um, Geraldine Eschner and illustrated by Peggy, not, not Niall, but Nee Neil. I'm not really sure how to pronounce that. She might be French, who knows. And well, here are my lessons, actually. Oh, I kind of want to see what I did. <laughs> oh, yeah, this one. Has anyone did this lesson with the... Uh, the uh, kind of like the plastic card and the white paint. Anyways, it was stuck in there. I must have did it at one point. This book is great. It's kind of based on Clay, Paul Clay's Castle in the Sun. And it's a wonderful example of warm and cool colors, complementary colors, and really bright colors and color blocking. So you can, uh, if you're doing a color lesson, this is a great book to to kind of show them how an illustrator would use color really effectively, like the beautiful warm, uh, scenarios and then the beautiful blues and how the cat is yellow so he pops out because he's a complimentary color. So I love that book. Um, here's one, Colorful Dreamer. I think this is really good too. Um, it's the story of Matisse and I have a lot of Matisse books and I love them all but this one does focus a little bit more on color so I do love that one. Are you Blue Dog's friend? Of course. This one, you know, George Rodriguez. I think this is um, especially appealing to any age kids, even the older kids. I did a lot of uh, art projects when I was teaching for fifth and sixth grade students based on these books. There's something very friendly and uh, the color of course is very rich and you can go into a lot of color theory about why the artists use this. But there's something about just the playfulness of a blue dog. and. Dogs are so friendly, and, uh, and everyone, mostly everyone has one, except for this lady here. Uh, and older kids really like it, so it's not just for younger kids. So I've gotten a lot of art projects out of this book. And finally, uh, this one is beautiful. Veronique Maisano and Elise Manso wrote this. Um, Veron Veronique is the illustrator, I believe. And, oh gosh, this, the illustrations in this book they're kind of to die for. They're, I think it's the most beautiful book on Chagall that I've ever seen. The text, the copy, it's a long story and it's, it's, it's meant to kind of capture the dreamlike state of Chagall. So it's, it's, you can either follow it or not. But the colors, oh my lord, they're just exquisite and it gets into the tropical colors. It kind of moves from blues to reds to greens. Oh, so, so pretty. I love this book. It's just one of those books that you're just like, oh gosh, I wish I could illustrate like that. Okay, now there's another book I want to introduce you to. It's my own. <laughs> so funny. I thought when I was doing the art project, it might be fun to do a project from my book, Drop Paint Sparkle. I don't know if you guys I have this book, but there's a project in it called The Funky Cat and it's super approachable, very easy for all kids. And you know, it comes with a little drawing guide and you can, if you purchase the book, I hope you know this, you can go to Draw Paint Sparkle website, I have my own separate website, and you can download the handout. You just have to put in your book order number and, and uh, you get access to this uh, private URL. Anyways, I thought it'd be fun to do with this little funky cat and to show you the color theory on how to kind of teach it to your kids. So, are you guys all ready to get started? <laughs> okay. okay, I'm gonna roll up my sleeves. We're doing paint today. Okay, so uh, the first one is this exercise. And I'm gonna show you really quickly how to do this fun activity. This could be for free choice. This could be for a sub. This could be for um, just a warm up activity before any color mixing lesson. I'm gonna put this on the whiteboard or the board here. And I did photocopy that onto cardstock. So it's a little stiffer. It's gonna hold the paint a little bit better. Now all you're gonna need is this. 
this tiny little um, paper plate. It's styrofoam. I do like the styrofoam plates a little bit better. If you are like me, when I was in the classroom, I did not uh, use a lot of plates. <laughs> in fact, I used mostly plastic trays that I would wash out. I was just kind of a little bit picky with what I threw out. But if you have these little plates, um, by all means, use them and you can wash these as well. I definitely would. You want to put two colors, in this case, blue and green, and a little bit of white. And I'm using Faber-Castell liquid tempera paint. You can use any kind of liquid tempera paint. Faber-Castell is one of my favorites and also the Crayola Premium or Artista 2 brand. I love that. It's very creamy and very rich. Now, the instructions basically say, you know, try to create as many variations on these three colors as possible. And don't just paint the color onto the little circle. So in other words, don't just take the green and paint a circle green. So what you want to do is take a little scoop of green, just like that, and put it right beside the green. Then take a little bit of white, and the kids can do this in any order, and in that little spot, you see this? You want to just mix it up. Now the goal is for the kids to mix the color on the plate and then when they have a, co a color that they like they can paint the circle. I'm just going to wet my brush a little bit. And this is not an art project where they have to be neat. I mean, it's, it's not. They just want to be experimental. So if they go outside the lines, of course, that's okay. Now, to make a little bit of a different color, perhaps add a little bit more green. So I'm, at, I'm picking up a little scoop. And sometimes kids don't know what a scoop means. So I say, just take a little bit of the green paint, just like you were sampling a little bit of the yogurt at the yogurt shop or the ice cream, just a little tiny sample scoop. And then I'm just going to paint a little bit darker. And now I think I'll add a little blue. So I have a little bit of green and you can use this existing little pot puddle or you can make a new one. So maybe I'll take the existing color I have, put it in the middle, take a little bit more white and maybe take a little bit more blue. Now there's no rule here. What you want to encourage is how many variations can you come up with? And some kids, six little colors are not going to be enough. But it really, they get to see, you know, how colors play together and what happens when there's a little bit more blue. And I'm going to make a little bit more blue here. Maybe take a little bit more of the white. And so a little bit of water. Sometimes if the brush is dry, just dip it in the water and come back out again. And now we're getting into a beautiful teal. So it's sometimes hard to tell children how to mix paints you know, without kind of actually doing it yourself. Like, it's hard to have a formula. I mean, you mix one quarter teaspoon of blue with one quarter teaspoon of green. Like, there's no exact formula. They just really have to experiment and play by themselves. So you can see that, you know, they could just play all day long. And I think I'm going to end this by making something really light because I love, um, I love pale blues. And we'll see what happens. Okay, that looks good. So here's what I came up with. These are all my different colors. Now, one thing, um, you could have an extra activity. Children could come up with their own names. So the children can, you know, look at this first, like pea soup green or whatever color they want. And that's just an extra tie-in. And you can even go into a little bit more literary connections by saying, you know, make sure the names um, are alliteration. So it has to be like, uh, ghostly green or ghastly green or something like that. So there you go. That's the exercise. And now we're going to move into the project of the day, which is based on the book from Draw Paint Sparkle. So if you haven't gotten that, please do. And if you have gotten, I don't mean to make this a commercial, but you know, <laughs> it's kind of exciting when your book comes out and I really do like it. I mean, I, I should, but it's, it, there's just a lot of fun projects. And this is the one we're doing the little funky cat. I really think it's cute. So the drawing is in the book, the drawing guides, but this is what you can kind of come up with. This cute little cat. 
Now, the whole point of these lessons is it doesn't matter what you draw. It could be a fish. It could be a cat. It could be um, a tree. It could be a butterfly. It could be a flower. It could be a scarecrow. It could be anything you want it to be. It doesn't matter. The important thing is, is that technique. I've done this with many grade levels. What you're going to need is a paper plate and the three primary colors. So we're going to use yellow, blue, and red. Now, let's put a little bit of a I just want to address it. If you are a teacher that insists on using magenta or cyan and yellow, that, that color combination, go for it. There's no, um, I, I find that red, blue, and yellow are very approachable names for young children. But if you feel that that's not acceptable, because the true printing colors are my, magenta, cyan, and yellow, then please use those colors. But I think for all practical purposes, these are the colors that I'm going to stick with. And you're going to need three of these. And what I like to do is just give about a, a nickel size blob on a piece, on, on a little paper plate, just like that. If you need more, you can come and get more. But at, in the meantime, you don't want to waste a lot of paint because you don't know how far the children will get in the project because it depends for everyone out there who's watching. You'll all need a um, certain amount of time. And I can't tell you exactly how long this project will take because it depends on the complexity of the, the subject matter and it depends on how many kids and all of those things. But you might have to stop. If you have to stop, there's really no way to save the paint. You kind of have to clean off your plate and start again the next time. So here is what I have. Can you see that? It's a yellow, red, and blue. Now, the whole concept of this lesson is to have a subject and the children will learn that they have three colors already, but they can have so many more when they mix the colors. So they're essentially creating secondary colors out of the primary colors. This is a, uh, particularly good in first and second grade, and quite frankly, all the way up to sixth grade. By fifth and sixth grade, children do know, but you never know what they know. So it never hurts to reinforce these things. Okay, I like to start with the lightest color, and this is what I like to do. Take a little scoop, just like that, and somewhere on your paper, on your drawing, paint one or two things yellow. And so I'm gonna paint this I started off thinking I'd draw a hat and then it didn't look good. So now it's basically a circle. So that brush was still a little green from my last project. So I'm just gonna wipe it off. What I have is just a mason jar and I'm just dabbing the brush at the very bottom and then dragging the bristles across the rim. And then I have some a paper towel there just to make sure that the color was clean. I'm gonna go back in with my yellow. Again, just taking a little scoop, and I think I'll paint this little button yellow, just like that. Okay, I'm good, that's all I need to do. Now, what you wanna do next is clean your brush. So you, you would do this with the, with the children. You would paint right alongside with them. So you would say, okay, everyone, did you all paint one or two things yellow? Most of the class will be finished by the time you move on to red. Okay, everyone, hold up your clean paintbrush and I want you to take a little uh, scoop of red. Now I want you to paint one or two things on your composition red. So they'll choose uh, whatever they want. I'll do this bow tie. And maybe I'll do a little dot up here. Okay, that's all. I'm gonna clean my brush. And I'm gonna repeat, do the same format. Okay, everyone, time's up. Now we're gonna do something blue. So paint something on your painting blue. And I think I'll do some stripes here. I've done this lesson with giraffes, elephants, fish, butterflies, so many things. It doesn't matter. The important thing is to have fun. Okay, now I'm gonna keep my blue paint on the brush. This is what I want you guys to do next. You wanna take a little scoop of blue and put it just between the yellow and the blue. Then scoop up a little bit of the 
yellow and it's going to make your yellow dot a little messy that's okay and then I want you to blend those in together just like this and the younger the kids they're going to be like oh my gosh I just made green this is amazing so take that green and paint it wherever you want the green paint to go and I think I'm going to have a green face he's a green cat so I'm just going to go around the outside and take a little bit more go around my eyes and you can also tell the kids kids if you feel your paint is too dark then feel free to add a little bit of water because water will loosen it up and it'll make it a little bit lighter and for a lot of kids it's going to be easier to paint so I have my outside all painted and now I'm just going to brush slowly a little bit more carefully and get all of my little bumps out Try to make it as smooth as possible. This is when I do kind of introduce the smoothing technique where kids get the color on the artwork first. So I'm running out. I'm going to make a little bit more. And more water. Now I just want to show you up close that this is looking, um, it's kind of messy in a way. You can see a lot of dark and light spots. To fix that, if you have the time, and if the children are in second grade and above, don't bother <laughs> with the little ones, they just won't understand you. Just take your paintbrush and just smooth over the rough surface. So you're just basically, it's almost like putting lotion on your, your legs or suntan lotion. You're just kind of smoothing it all out. Your paintbrush should be just a little bit wet, not too much, just enough to smooth it all out. There, and it's all nice. Okay, now clean your brush, and you can see where I'm going with this. We're gonna do another color, and this time we're gonna do orange. So I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow, so a little bit of yellow paint, right now get it in the camera, and put it right between the red and the yellow and take a little bit, a little scoop of red, not too much, because red is more powerful than the yellow. And mix them together, just like this. And I'm gonna take a little bit more yellow, because I, I definitely overdid it with the, with the red. And can you guys all see? Okay, now, you're gonna pick a part of your, your cat and paint it orange. And this is a beautiful orange, I'm really liking this. It's so pretty that I feel like I want to do another part. Um, let's do it right here. If the colors mix together on the artwork, well, like no worries. It's all part of you know creating art. And I'll do one more little thing, and you get the idea. Now, I'll say to the kids, okay, we have one more combination to do. And can you guess what it's going to be? And then this is a little test. And of course, I'll have posters like this up all over the wall. <laughs> and I'll have them on the whiteboard. I go, okay, we did red and yellow and blue. And we did orange and we did green. What's next? And some people will go black. No, purple. So then you go purple. So take a little bit of blue, just like that. And a little bit of red. I like a little bit more red than blue. And then you can get a little lighter color. Now here's the thing. Um, when you're mixing regular Crayola paints and Faber-Castell Faber paints, one thing that happens when you mix the red and the blue, it comes out very dark, like very dark. So you, I find you have to add a little bit more water for it to become light enough that the kids will appreciate it. Otherwise, it almost looks black. And I'm just gonna do these little, can you see how dark that is? It's really hard to get a light purple unless you use more water. So really um, encourage the kids to, see that's, to add more water to their brush than they normally would, especially compared to the other colors. And that way you're gonna get a much lighter purple. Okay. So you can kind of see that it's a little bit messy. Remember, one of my biggest tips is <laughs> Don't outperform your kids. Like, if it's yours is messy, that's okay. 
you don't want to be purposely messy, but tell them, okay, that's just the start. Uh, we, now I can kind of tidy it up. You can go back over your painting and you can do a background. If you're running out of time, something that you can do is a pattern background. So you can do like a, a stripe and kids love when you start introducing those options of how you can finish your artwork. And maybe you want to put a polka dot on like his little cheeks here. The kids will really just start having fun with their art. And you know, you should have fun with your art too. And then if you really want something light, I think I'll have a really light yellow here. I'm gonna make my little, little face there. And then you can finish it up so um, that way. I highly encourage you to do the background as well, maybe a light blue or a light purple or anything that fits in with your theme. Then when it dries, the most important thing, and not today when it's wet, but take an oil pastel, because I drew with an oil pastel. Take that oil pastel and go over all those lines again, because when you put these pieces of art on the rack, they'll look like a hot mess. They will. Just tell yourself, part one, that's part one. When the kids come in again, we'll do part two. And don't rush this. Part two takes a while. To, to really teach children how to outline something, it doesn't have to be black, it could be white, it could be blue. It really makes everything pop and brings everything together. And if they want to, they could add highlights to any of the section of their artwork with other colors of oil pastel. So the opportunities are really endless. So that's what I have for you. That's a really great way to using that paper plate technique and kind of teaching children how to mix colors. Now, has anyone asked this question to you? <gasps> Mrs. Palmer, Mrs. Palmer, can I mix all the colors together? Yes, you can. When your picture is almost done, especially if you're doing a scarecrow and you might need a little brown, go ahead and mix all those colors together. This is absolutely the most fun part for the kids. So do not skip it. You're gonna to have to throw the paint away anyways. So have some fun. Mine is super dark and black and yucky and the kids may or may not wanna do anything with it, but guess what? They just realized when they mixed all the colors together, they're gonna to get this horrendous dark color, this black, and they're all gonna be a little different. But you know what? Why not? I can use that to maybe paint you know the outlines of my little kitty cat my funky cat now I have a pretty big brush you could kind of get your brush a little bit oh I like this one thing I didn't put on my cat that you could at this point did anyone see what I could do whiskers there we go and you can outline everything either in oil pastel when it's dry or like a, I would use a smaller paintbrush. This paintbrush is very thick and so it's covering up a lot of the drawing but you know what the heck it looks fun. I like this and go around here and you get the idea. So that's all I have. Do you guys have any questions now? Let's see. So Leslie asks what grades and ages would you recommend for this project? Well, like I said earlier, it can really be for any grades. Um, but I do find that the most important time to introduce secondary colors uh, to a group of students is second grade. Secondary, second grade. It's kind of like my rule of thumb. Um, the kindergarten, they're just learning to paint. <laughs> they're just learning to get it on the table. We have a great pumpkin lesson where children learn to mix red and yellow and white to kind of make an orange, a light orange pumpkin. And those are using like, not blue and green to make a, like a dark mess. It's just kind of bright, happy colors, so it's more controlled. So I say start this with a second grade. In fact, if you look at any of my color lessons on the blog Deep Space Sparkle, you'll notice that I almost always start this lesson, this um, kind of color wheel. I call it a color wheel fish or a color wheel cat or a color wheel uh, clown or a color wheel um, scarecrow, it's almost always for second grade because I think that's the perfect age to start. Well, thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed this. I love, I love color. There's, there's so many things you can do with it. And the most important thing for you as an art teacher, in my mind, is to find a way to get kids painting. 
you know, art is always thought about as, okay, I want to teach children uh, art, so therefore I'm going to be drawing all the time, and I don't want to get too messy because I have like a busy schedule. But if you want to really want to teach color, I think mixing is just the most beautiful thing. It's the most exploratory, magical thing for a child. I love all art mediums, but you know, when you, kids really get into tempera paint, and I would use tempera paint. Uh, watercolor is not as effective for this type of lesson, and nor is acrylic paint because it's, it's, acrylic paint has too many um, has too many limitations as far as cleanup. So it makes it a little bit difficult to uh, to teach to do this lesson and clean up. Oh yeah, Ashley just put the handout. Thank you very much, Ashley, for giving the link. I created a post on Deep Space Sparkle, and I'll uh, keep the video there as well as soon as I posted it to Facebook. And you can all download this. If you're a sparkler, there's no need to download this. You already have it in your Epic Color Bundle. So if you don't have the Epic Color Bundle, then you can download it. But you know, it's there for you. Um, for everyone else, there's that, those two activities and that little mini poster that I hope you really find helpful. So everyone, I hope you have a, a really awesome weekend. Um, I'm going to go home to my honey. Neil took the afternoon off. <laughs> I think he deserves the afternoon off. And we're going to go and just kind of have a nice quiet evening at home and uh, just kind of enjoy the nice peace and quiet and uh, being an empty nester. Yeah, they're all gone. The kids are gone. <laughs> it's just crazy. So I hope you have a wonderful weekend with your family or with your partner or spouse, whatever it may be, or your girlfriends. And uh, I will see you again next Thursday. No, next week I will be in Toronto. But the following week I'll be doing another uh, epic art tutorial and I'll pick an element of art and principle of design to follow. And I can tell you exactly what it's going to be. It comes after color in our epic curriculum. Epic. Oh, contrast and emphasis. This is a really unique one. I love this one. This one's going to be fun. Okay, so I'll see you in two weeks, guys.